welcome back you are watching our mobile world congress special show from barcelona and we are speaking about some of the key trends that will have a sizable impact on the world of technology business advertising and media in the coming days now speaking of impact there is one man sure to have played a role in disrupting the smartphone market over the last one decade and that man is carl pay after co-founding oneplus he started his own nothing a couple of years ago and now as the world awaits a premium flagship from nothing i caught up with carl pay to not just find out more about this device but to also speak about what does it take to launch not just one but two smartphone brands in a span of just 10 years let's find out you are someone who has built not just one but two smartphone brands in a decade's time in this rapidly evolving you know market mm. tech space what does it take to really do that uh, naivety naivety uh, i think nothing is a lot harder because mm. we're not a part of a bigger company so every every little thing we have to think about ourselves from supply chain to capital to human resource etc um don't do it don't do don't it don't do it is my advice to to other people it's just because it's so complicated if you're making an app you just need to make an app but in our business you have to do supply chain you have to do engineering on the hardware side on the software side you have to do design you have to do marketing you have to do customer service you have to do sales it's like how can you do all of that it's just so complicated yeah so what it takes is actually not a great idea, but rather that every single, all those functions that I talked about, hmm. they all need to work together. Yeah. Like the integration of all those capabilities, that's what it takes. Yeah, yeah. So not just a great idea, but, you know, to endure through bringing in all yeah. those functions uh, together. Uh, what is your assessment of the India market today being the largest smartphone market in the world? I'm very bullish on India and India's economy. Uh, I think this year it's going to grow by 6% while large parts of the world are going to fall into a recession. Sure. I think the population is very young so there's a lot of uh, a lot more uh, they can contribute to building yeah. the country and the economy. Um, I think we have a great start in India. I was uh, able to meet the Prime Minister recently on my trip so uh, I'm still really grateful for that because in that meeting we were the only startup company all the other companies were very established so i think there's a, a affinity for our brand in the market already so hope to build upon that it's going to be a important market for us going forward a lot of our manufacturing is uh, already done in india all the best for the coming days thank you so much thanks for joining thank us you. in a conversation today. good to see you again good to see you again at Mobile World Congress, Nokia made an announcement to replace its iconic Yale Blue logo with a new one to avoid being confused with HMD Global's phone business. But how will it really impact the phone business? To tell us more, we are joined in by Adam Ferguson and Sanmeet Singh Kochar from HMD Global. They are also speaking about how they are reviving the iconic Nokia brand for the consumers of today. Would you see an impact of this uh, brand identity change, a logo change on your business at all? So from an India standpoint, uh, we have seen that uh, consumer has been in love with this brand and this logo. And uh, we have been interacting with our fans in India and uh, with our friends uh, from the media and our distributors. And, uh, you know, we see that uh, people have no confusion at all. And people are loving the fact that we are going to continue with this uh, logo, which people associate with quality with durability and uh, love it so much yeah and nokia used to be the device that you know for someone like me who you know stepped into you know buying a smartphone right at the time when i was stepping out from school entering college and that was like the phone that we would purchase back then there was no option otherwise from then to now how have you transformed this whole brand nokia to what it is today and what are Nokia consumers like today? What do they ask for? So the fantastic news is there is a lot of the, the core Nokia brand that is as relevant today as it was back when you bought your first 3310 or, you know, whatever the device was that you were in love with. Well, there you go. That's the, whatever you were in love with. 
So durability, longevity, yeah. these are the things that are still very much at the heart of the Nokia brand. You know, yeah. In India, for example, we have the replacement guarantee. If something happens to the device in that year, we're going to take care of you. There's no problem because we're so confident in the devices that we're putting into the market. You look at some of the new C-series devices that we're launching, the Nokia C22, the Nokia C32. We've put these devices through durability testing versus some of the sure. best phones in this price point. And sure. we know when it comes to drop survivability, we're right there at the top. <laughs> so, you know, some of those core things are still very, very much at the heart yeah. of what the brand stands for. And of course, now you've got things like long battery lives, Correct. all of these devices, three day battery lives yeah. that are in there. You've got really good performance as people move into the smartphone category. We're introducing new things like memory extension to the C-series device. Uh, and that's going to help the performance at these entry price points as people use some of their storage as virtual RAM. Sure. And what is working uh, for the India market, Sanmeet? If you can share details on how are consumers buying Nokia devices in the country? So today, one of the things that we have in our phones is that we don't have any bloatware. We don't tell our consumers what apps should be preloaded in their devices. We want them to choose what they want. Similarly, today, the young consumers are spending so much time on their devices and all of their bank passwords, let's say the photos, their personal messages, everything is on their device. And we offer, even on our C-series devices, two years of quarterly security updates. So devices, yeah. the Nokia devices today are the most secure and they have, uh, uh, you know, the most uh, security updates. Plus, uh, on our X-series and G-series devices, we offer two and three operating system updates. So we always have the newest operating system sure. working with you. So the best software as well as the best in terms of hardware and our service in terms of one year of replacement guarantee, which sure. means that if something happens to your phone, we don't repair it, we just replace it. Wonderful. And then bringing back the classics and, uh, you know, um, uh, thoughts and ideas such as the most eco-friendly uh, smartphone out there, which was the most recent launch that you guys had. How is it really working for uh, the brand? So the answer is extremely well. So mm -hmm. when you take the X30 5G as a, mm -hmm. as a really good example, mm -hmm. the most sustainable device we've ever launched. Um, you've got the high levels of recycled material, 100% recycled aluminium, 65% recycled, recycled plastic into those frames. Not only that, it's got some of, it's coupled with some of the best hardware we've ever put out. Some of our best ever pure view photography on this device. Sure. You look at the low light photography in particular, absolutely fantastic compared to even the, the best competitors at that particular price point. So not only is it a sustainable device, it stacks up incredibly well uh, against the, the, the rest of the market as well. Thank you so much. Thanks for joining us Thank today. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thanks Thank a lot. You. Sustainability and diversity in tech were some of the key trends at this year's Mobile World Congress, says Greg Kurehe, global TMT leader at EY. I spoke to him to find out how will these themes impact businesses and transform businesses in the coming days and what are the innovations that will shape the tech and media landscape in the coming months? Let's find out. At the Mobile World Congress, I'm catching up with Greg Kadehe, Global TMT Leader, EY. Welcome to CNBC TV 18. Great. Thanks, Shabani. Glad to have you, uh, be here with you. Uh, at the Mobile World Congress, Greg, what is the most interesting tech that you have witnessed so far? And what is the most impressive one that you've witnessed? Well, I think it's actually the tech itself is really impressive, but it's not just the tech. I think one of the things that's really been a focus that I think is everywhere here this year is the energy situation, especially with what's going sure. on geopolitically, has really gotten everybody real about sustainable consumption by tech. Yeah. And, you know, telcos are huge, huge users of energy. Um, but now it's not just a societal imperative. It's now it's a financial necessity to adopt green tech. And it's everything from wearables to low or no energy sensors, uh, things that were theoretical, maybe the last couple of shows yeah. that are now actually in production. I think that's been really, really impressive. But I think a couple of other things are impressive as well is this used to be very telco centric a decade ago, and then it became B2B tech focused layered on. Hmm. But now it's what I call the emergence of convergence. Uh, there is every industry you can possibly think about here. And it's not just industry either. Government is now here saying, how can we use communications and tech 
not only impact our citizens, but do so in a more sustainable way. So I think that's been very impressive. And one other point is the whole notion of diversity here. The participation base, in every dimension you can possibly think of is here. And I think in particular, we've seen on stage or on the floor, way more female CEOs mm. who are really great role models for people who want to come into telco mm. and tech. So it's been the tech, but it's also been the people and the, the companies that are taking this and making actual usage of it. So what are the trends that you've picked up from here that will shape the media? Well, it's part of an overall trend. I think you've seen it is a lot of theoretical discussion of AI last year. Yeah. Again, a really fast pivot to practical AI in general, especially AI at the edge. Mm. But generative AI. I mm -hmm. think this is a big one in, in your industry, yeah. right? It, generating images. Uh, in some other industries, mind generating code. So the fact that you're going to be able to have you know, machine learning that can then generate things, mm -hmm. that is a big trend. I think it's going to affect media. There's a lot of discussion of metaverse as well, but I think metaverse is something that is accepted. How fast that happens is going to be dependent on some of the communication networks. But the notion of generative AI it's again, no longer theoretical. It's going into the reality rather quickly. And how transformational is it? Because generative AI, uh, uh, you know, chat GPT, metaverse mm -hmm, are some mm -hmm. of the things that have been discussed at large over the past one, one and a half year or so. Right, right. Uh, you know, how transformative is it going to be for the industry, uh, you know, in the years to come? Well, I think it's, it, even in our industry as, as a service provider, it's going to be very transformative very quickly. We're using those things ourselves to take the things that are routine, you know, knowledge searches and things like that, that, that you may need a bunch of people to go do things, to now re rel relatively quickly using AI to do that. We're actually doing that within our own organization. Sure. So I think it's huge. But it's actually the other thing is people tend to think in the old way of thinking that, okay, they release this, it does that. That's not how it's working with generative AI. Mm. You've seen some things in the last few months where, oh, we didn't expect that would happen. That's quickly tuned out. It learns itself and it starts to replicate a new way of providing service. And just think about that connected across many companies. Mm. It's going to be really, really fast. Yeah. You would be in talks with a lot of clients over here at MWC. Mm -hmm. yes. uh, what are the top concerns of these C-suite clients of yours? Well, it's funny. We'll get back to the energy thing. I would say the energy, it's, it's sustainability, but it's also energy as a cost. Mm. Because many of these businesses are very huge, mm. but especially in telecommunications, their margins are very thin. So if you think if your energy costs just doubled or tripled, mm. you're really be So that has been a big, big conversation with them. And it's also to your earlier point on devices. If consumers are spending on a lot of other things, how much do they have to spend on the next mobile? Sure. So it's been really a lot about cost structure, but to, to make sure that they're reaching price points mm. that consumers of all demographics can really engage mm. with. So I think that's been a big part of it. With that, it's a wrap on Sorry About This Week. I hope you enjoyed our Mobile World Congress special show from Barcelona. Goodbye.